Okay, so I have completely sanded down the countertops. Tried to take some of the glossy sheen off of it. It's hard to tell, it still looks shiny in this video, but in person it it is more of a dull shine. So I scraped off all the paint here in front of the sink. I just wasn't happy with um, the little areas where it had come up, which you can see right here is where it had originally peeled off. And so we peeled all the rest of this off just to make it more smooth. And I'm going to patch all of this. I'm gonna start with putting a black base coat down. Here's all the rest of the countertops. You can see here, this wasn't originally this bad. As I sanded, it came off some more. But um, all along here, there are some spots that got scraped off for one reason or another. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to try to multitask here a little bit. Now if I recall, when I originally did this, I used a roller to apply this on. But for this part of the job, since I'm not doing a really large countertop, I'm just going to kind of throw this on there. I just need this black base on here for when we put the minerals on next. And you want the black base on there so that way any areas where you don't have minerals you can see the black hold on you can see where the black kind of peeks through a little bit so it's nice having this black base um maybe I'll do that too okay I think that's good all right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I wanted to add, I'm going to let this dry for eight hours now before we come back and put the minerals on. Okay, so let's start here. I'm gonna show you the mineral colors I have. I had the, I think it was called Chocolate Brown Kit. I don't remember now, this is leftover from last year. Okay, so this is step B. And this is um, chocolate brown, Inca gold, and what is this? Brown feldspar. Now, as you can see, this says step two A, B, and C. I did not follow the directions on that when I did it. I set it up on a plastic tray or plate here. And I got my little sponges, I got them wet, and then I squeezed them out. And I didn't just do one at, um, color at a time. I, I did all three. Okay, so here it is the next morning. This has been left to dry all night. Looking good. And last night, after I did that, I went along and I fixed all the edges. It's kind of hard to see, but this video makes it look like there's still kind of a line there. Here you have a better idea. You can see how the line, where it used to be really white along here, has been fixed. Once I sponge on the minerals in this area here and over there by the sink, and I've let those dry, then I'll go and I'll sand it lightly before I put on the first top coat. Which is the exciting part, because I'm going to use 
the glitter in between our top coats. Okay, so unlike my last uh, video where I mentioned to use a wet sponge, um, I actually like the dry sponge better. I take that back. I ended up not liking um, how it made it a little bit um, murky. So I would start with a dry sponge. Okay, so I am going to find the side of the sponge that's not too flat. I want it kind of bumpy. I'm going to use this sponge right here. I think I'm going to use this side. And I'm going to dab into it and then dab off to the side. Okay, now this will give you, please excuse my dirty dishes in the sink. Um, this will give you an idea of what it's like starting on a completely bare countertop when um, you have black coat all over. It'd be the same as what we're about to do here. So I'm just going to go through here. You can see some white spots. I think I got a little bit of the the other color on my sponge, but that's okay. I want a little more. And I kind of churn it as I go along because there again, like I mentioned last night, you don't want all your shapes to be exactly the same. And um, I'll try to get Um, a part of the sponge that's kind of pointed that I can get up in against that crack and then I might make one area a little more dark because remember granite is not all the same okay so that doesn't look like much yet but we're going to come through here and let's get another color here. I'm looking at my sponge, which side I want to use. Now I'm going to come with our lightest white color. I hope you're able to see this okay on the video. It's looking good, but I'm going to add some more of that darkest color in because that helps give it more of the, the red look that you can see here. And I don't have much of that red in here, so when I get through with this white, I'm going to go back through. Okay, so i got a big splotch of white there. How can I fix that if I don't like how white it is? Well, I turn my sponge over to the dry side, and I just kind of dab it and try to move it around a little bit. It's important to not push hard. You are barely pushing with these sponges. It does not take much work. Now you can try to smudge and smear them a little as you go along, but it's up to you on if you like that look or not. Sometimes I like to do it a little, but if you do it too much, I think it looks a little messy. Okay, so I put a little bit of paint just on the edge here because if you see right there, you can see under my tape, a little white area. I'm gonna try to get in there with this. Mm. 
was able to get in a little bit. Not as much as I would have liked, but I really don't think you're going to be able to notice that very much. Okay, let me get some more red here. Well, it's not really red, it's the more of a walnut brown. And I want to go back along here just to add some more color. And get some more color. And now I'm kind of it's really I'm trying to get it in an angle. There you go. You can see the more of that darker red on top. So this time I'm pushing down a little more because I'm really wanting this red to get in. Ah, I keep calling it red. This this reddish brown to get in there a little more. There. Look at that. There's a whitish spot here. That was from the last time I came through. I'm just gonna. Oh well, it's fine. It adds some character to it. I'm going to go through here. And there's still some spots here from my previous and wanted to blend them in. Still trying to get in really right there next to the sink. It's so tricky. I remember last time I had a really thin piece that I used. But you can see this corner is kind of sharp. It actually seems to be working pretty good. to kind of get up here a little bit. Good morning, dear. Somebody's all up and ready for the day. Okay. Gonna add some more red in right here. Sometimes when you step back and something doesn't look really good up close and you step back it's like oh that doesn't really look bad it kind of adds a variety look to it okay well there you go I'm gonna just kind of go over any spots that I might have missed on the countertop um, and then I'm gonna let it sit for about four hours and then we will put the top coat on. We'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we are finally ready for the top coat, which I have poured out here. And I have my glitter already right here. I should probably go ahead and open it. I was hoping to have somebody to hold the video camera for me, but nobody's available, so. Okay. So I am going to start, I want to make sure I don't have any fuzzies on this brush that we're going to use. We're going to start using this really, you're supposed to use a foam brush, make sure there's nothing on it. Um, 
I'm supposed to use a foam brush to run right along here at the back. I couldn't find mine, so I'm going to use this little woolly brush that I had from a different project just to run it along the back since our roller won't be able to get back there. Let's dip it in there like that. Now you'll see that I have not moved my oven out of here. Um, not too worried about getting that inside edge where the oven is since I have already done this before. So I'm going to do a coat right here. You should have gotten up to there first with that other woolly. Now in the instructional video it says if you hear a little sound in the roller, it's not wet enough. So Now as I roll my final coat, I'm supposed to apply more pressure on this side. It's called back rolling. I'm going to get it wet again. Okay, now I'm going to start here and I'm going to back roll. Okay, I'm going to back roll. Just kind of putting a little more pressure on this front end here. I forgot. I was supposed to do this front area here first. Okay. Now I'm going to try to attempt this glitter. occurs to me it'd probably be easier to use my glitter if I could get my fingers into it easier. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Okay. And here we go. Now I am just going to lightly sprinkle this on here. It doesn't appear that you can even see this in the video. Yeah, you really can't see the glitter. It's too bad. But then again, I can't really see it very well right now either. Because the whole thing looks so shiny. Okay, I'm going to turn the video off for a second so I can focus on getting this glitter on here really well. And then I'll turn it back on. Okay. So I have the glitter on there now, but it doesn't look like the camera is picking it up, which is too bad because it's really pretty. I'll try to figure out a way to get a picture of it to include with this video and see if we can get it so you can see the glitter. Okay, so you can see the nice high gloss sheen on here. I just applied the top coat over here. And what I'm doing 
is I'm dipping this dry toothbrush in and into the glitter and then I'm just going around on the countertop and sprinkling it everywhere. Now what I didn't get on the videotape was applying it up here. I got some roll lines in here. I don't know if it's picking it up. There's some lines there that I'm not happy with, but this is just my first coat. Can you see those lines in the wet top coat? Um, that is because I did not push hard enough on the leading side of that roller as I was moving across to the right. So that way you're actually lifting up on the side you're moving away from. And that helps leave no lines as you work your way across the counter. And I wish that the camera was able to pick up this glitter better. But anyway, so this is how you go about putting the glitter on. Okay, I will check in later. Okay, here is the first top coat. I did end up with a dry spot here somewhere. I knew where it is. I guess you can't really see it on the camera. And I'm not that worried about it because I have to really search for it in order to see it. And once I have applied my second coat, I don't think you will notice it that much. And I guess you still can't see the glitter really well. Maybe you can a little there. Let's come over here to areas where it's been drying for a few minutes. So I can see some of the glitter, but it doesn't look like the camera is going to pick it up. It is there. Very subtle. When it comes to glitter, I prefer it be subtle. Alright. And let's look here at our sink area. Oh, that looks so much better. Almost as if you'd never know that that was messed up a few days ago. It's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry overnight. It only has to dry for four hours, but I'm going out with some friends tonight, so Maybe if I'm not feeling too tired when I get home, I'll go ahead and put a second coat on. Otherwise, I'll come back and take care of it in the morning. Look at that. Look how nice and shiny it is. That's pretty much all dry to the touch anyway. Okay. See you later.